Hello, this is Don Anders, and welcome to Easy Money. We have David McKnight here. David McKnight is a best-selling author uh, and star of his uh, own movie based on his book, The Power of Zero, The Tax Train is Coming. Um, and David, last video we talked about uh, where you think taxes are going, or when you think taxes are going up based on the Biden administration. I'm going to go ahead and link that up top if you want to watch that video. But now let's talk about why you think taxes are going up anyways. You know, is in, you know, and for most of our lifetimes, we've seen taxes do nothing but fall. So why do you think taxes are actually going to rise in the future, whether it's a year or, you know, four years or, or 10 years down the road? Why could tax rates go up or, as you say, could even double? I love, I love to take my cues from people that are much smarter than me. And one of those people is a former Comptroller General of the federal government, uh, David Walker. Um, David Walker was basically the head of the Government Accountability Office. He was on the board of Social Security. He was the nation's chief auditor. Uh, he knows more about the fiscal condition of our country than uh, just about anyone else on the planet. He was essentially the CPA of the USA. And when he was, uh, you know, in his position, he basically looked at the books and he said, hey, we have promised way more than we can afford to deliver. He says, social security is bad. He says, but as bad as social security is, as underfunded social security is, Medicare is five times more expensive. And he says, uh, in 2008, he said, to be able to deliver on those two promises of social security and, and Medicare, not to mention Medicaid, he said, we would have to double taxes immediately. Um, he says, you don't have to double taxes immediately, but for every year that you postpone doubling taxes, the national debt will grow by $2 trillion per year on average, each and every year until we hit this magical moment in our country when we have $53 trillion of debt. That's a big deal because if we had $53 trillion of debt, all of the revenue flowing into the U.S. Treasury at that point under today's tax rates would only be enough to pay the interest on all that debt, let alone any principal. So, um <clears throat> I also like to, to, to defer to a, a very famous economist by the name of Dr. Larry Kotlikoff out of Boston University. And, and Dr. Kotlikoff is the foremost expert in the world on what we call fiscal gap accounting. And essentially what he does is he projects out over uh, 75 years, everything that the United States has promised to pay for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid interest on the national debt. And he projects out over that same time period everything that we can afford to deliver based on today's tax rates. He says, if there's a difference between those two numbers then your country has a fiscal gap and the fiscal gap is your true national debt. He says the true national debt's not, not actually $28.5 trillion. It's much closer to $239 trillion. What does that mean? That means that you would have to have $239 trillion sitting in a bank account today earning treasury rates to be able to deliver on everything that the U.S. government has promised that they can't afford to pay. So there's a lot of people out there that recognize that we are on very, very uh, fiscally unstable uh, you know, ground moving forward, and that every year that goes by where the federal government fa fails to fundamentally reform the, uh, the fiscal, the, the, the forces that are, that are driving the fiscal insolvency of our country, then the fix on the back end is gonna be that much more, um, that much more um, draconian. And can, can we print our way out of our problem? There's a lot of people that say, <clears throat> it doesn't, doesn't really matter. We just print our way out of our problem. There's a so-called uh, modern monetary theorists that say that, hey, as so long as, you know, when we print money that grows the pie for everybody, there's not ever going to be hyperinflation. Well, here, here's the problem. We know that uh, when you do print money, that drives inflation. And we also know that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are all um, linked to inflation. So as you try to print your way out of the Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid problem, you drive the costs of those programs up commensurately. So it's like a dog chasing its tail. You never really uh, solve the problem. And so um, there's good evidence that even 10 years from now, tax rates would have to rise dramatically to keep our country solvent. In fact, David Walker said that tax rates have to double. Um, other experts have said, if not doubling tax rates, uh, it would be a dramatic rise in tax rates to keep our country solvent and to honor the commitments we've made to, to pay interest on debt. So, um, you know, we're just, we're walking into a future which is ominous at best. And um, like I said, every year that goes by where the federal government fails to um, fundamentally reform all of the programs that are causing these problems means that the fix on the back end is gonna be more aggressive and it's gonna affect 
uh, more Americans across every single tax bracket. So, and I've heard you talk about this for a while before COVID and the relief bills and everything else that's going on. So, I mean, is it magnifying or is it still kind of the same level over the last couple of years? Or is it, in your opinion, even more inevitable than it's ever been? Yeah, so, so the freight train uh, bearing down on Americans in the form of higher taxes just picked up a little more speed. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, um, we know that historically, at least in the last couple of years, uh, we put on about a trillion dollars of debt. We have a budget deficit of about a trillion dollars, which means that the national debt goes up by a trillion dollars per year. Um, not great, but it's sort of nothing compared to what happened over the course of the last year. Over the course of the last year, we added an astounding $6 trillion of debt. And the whole goal was to build a bridge across the abyss created in the U.S. economy by COVID-19. Now, most experts on either side of the aisle agree that that was a good thing to do. Um, you know, just a desperate times call for desperate measures. I think that it was a good idea to sort of resuscitate the economy through uh, taking those measures. But the reality is we have to sort of look at what the impact of that is going to be over time. Uh, we accumulated six years uh, worth of debt uh, in one year, um, which means that the date at which Social Security and Medicare are going to go insolvent actually got accelerated by three years. Uh, uh, social uh, Medicare from 2026 to 2023 becomes insolvent. And then um, Social Security essentially from 2033 to 2030. And so uh, it's going to require uh, massive new sources of revenue to be able to um, sort of shore those two programs up. So the question is, who's going to be paying for that? And the answer is, uh, it's most likely going to be the American taxpayer. Well, it won't be the first time either, right? After World War II, tax rates were in the 90s for some people. Right. And so so right. people who base taxes uh, on the trends of their lifetime, they're being short sighted because they're not really thinking back to what historically has happened. It's not like you're talking about this mythical dragon monster that's never been around. This has happened before in people's lifetime that are alive now. We've seen 90 plus percent tax brackets, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's historical precedent for tax rates that are much higher than they are today. Um, you look at other countries in the world uh, that have average effective tax rates that are double what we have here in the United States. And so um, it is not unusual. I mean, we tax rates now, when, when, when you're accumulating debt year over year over year to be able to pay your bills, that means that tax rates are artificially low. They've been suppressed by politicians to sort of curry favor with voters. The reality is until uh, the amount of money that's going out is equal to the amount that's coming in, your tax rates are probably not high enough. And, and certainly, um, I, I, there's a, a very smart lady out of um, the Committee for Responsible Federal Government by the name of Maya McGinnis. I actually interviewed her on my podcast a month ago. And um, she wrote a very interesting article where she, she asked the question, is it enough to tax the richest 1% uh, of our country to be able to solve the debt problem. Can we just, uh, and so what she did was she said, okay, at what tax rate would we have to tax the wealthiest 1% to simply prevent the national debt from growing by more than a trillion dollars per year? We're not talking about getting back to uh, even, we're not talking about paying off the debt, we're talking about preventing the debt from growing by more than $1 trillion per year. She said that we would have to raise tax rates on everybody, on every dollar made above and beyond $400,000 to 103%. Well, that's obviously not, not tenable. Nobody um, would want to uh, pay money to, to, to work for the privilege of working. <clears throat> and so then she, she slowly lowered the threshold and she, she lowered it to um, $250,000. And she concluded that tax rates would have to uh, go up to 80% on any dollar earned above on $250,000. She didn't feel like that was tenable. So she gradually lowered it to about $50,000. And what she found was that any dollar made above and beyond $50,000 would have to be taxed at 40%, which tells you that to simply prevent the national debt from growing by more than $1 trillion per year, we would have to broaden the tax base so as to uh, essentially touch every single 
taxpayer out there, or not everyone, but, but a huge swath of Americans that are not currently being taxed at those rates. And so we're just, we're marching to the future where the federal government is going to be absolutely hungry for new revenue. And where are they going to get that revenue from Americans who have sort of played by the rules and, 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 and saved and invested their entire lives and have money sitting on the train tracks in the form of 401ks and IRAs. Well, and there's other alternatives to those 401ks and IRAs. And we're going to get into that in the, in the uh, next video. Appreciate it, David. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want more information about retirement, investing, making money easy, you can go ahead and click here. Or if you'd like to subscribe, it really helps the channel. Uh, and then you also get updates when we release new information. You can click here to do that. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great day.